quantized from relativistic to quantum. He actually said that, he had a funny saying, he says, they're actually going to be very frightened of me, which they are, because he said that it took somebody out of the right field that came in through the side door from another approach because they haven't been able to solve it. That, that makes sense that somebody that was off the wall would figure it out. And that's the problem. <laughs> so I've never had a threat from any government or agency, ever. I have had a few scientists get drunk and uh, when they're sober, say my work's the best and most wonderful they've ever seen and stuff like that, and how could they have not have read my book six months sooner and this and that. And then, when they got drunk, they called me, you this, you that, I can't remember all the things they say, but about the 20th word was a scandalous Scotsman, and my best friend who was with me really burst into laughter on that. <laughs> <laughs> called me everything in the book. So, and I like that, I don't know. So, okay. Um, so we did cover this chart, which I normally forget. Um, we couldn't even touch this unless we had the toroid. Maybe we'll come back to it. I'll leave it up here. Maybe not. We'll see. Because it is interesting how it relates this to the toroid. Okay. We are now then going to pull it down. And we're about to get complicated. Okay. Everybody ready? I'll wait one second. It's interesting the two teachers are the ones talking about it. <laughs> right. Very good point. Okay, you guys over there. Just a sec. You ready? We're about to present the... We need your help. Yeah, yeah. We need your help to, on this. Okay. I'm going to want you guys to chart the way... This is Judy and Charlie. I'm going to want you to chart the way how this toroid, right, I mean, how this emblem right here is going to be a three-dimensional system. We're going to try and take everybody into dimension now. Okay? Because all this has ever been is a flat, straight line cross-section of a circle. Okay? We're going to now take them into dimension. And Charlie knows how a little bit. Yeah, I, I remember from yesterday a little bit about that. Okay. My students probably remember better. And he has great students. They're focused, they're yeah, concentrated. They're very, yeah. they, I'll, I'll ask them what they remember. And, yeah. Okay. They probably, Willow, I'm sure, remembers. Because she was the one that was, and then Renee was the one okay. to ask them what they remember. We have right here, so I'm telling you the answer before we go with Charlie's tonight. We're all going to try and help you understand. This right here, the reason these two points are different than these two points as this is telling you simply, nothing fancy, this is a coordinate system. On a simple coordinate system, you have an x, y, z axis. Okay. Okay, this is your x, this is your y, and this is your z. Everyone follow that? Z comes out at you essentially. Z comes out at you, like that. It's the dandelion puff principle. It's really coming out this way, this way, but it's in a phasing of thirds. Thirds means as it's coming out, this one's little, this is medium, and this is long. And the next one coming out to it, if this is representing a tile or a space, there's going to be one, two, three before that space is ever activated again. It's always in thirds. So they're, they're just not shooting out randomly. It's really, I'm so privileged to be understanding, to be able to mentally think of this. Because when I was just a little kid, I, would, I, I saw the books they wrote at this, the most advanced professor in the world, Eddington. And I, he was a wonderful guy. But it was, it, was as, it was the same as your children telling you a story at night before you go. It was like, uh, it was like um, Alvin and Clive's and what is it? Some, some Dewey hamster. And he always gets his head chewed <laughs> off at the end. It was a hamster story. Everything's a hamster story. So I, I really feel blessed to be able to get out of the hamster story and learn about how this energy sprays out. It's like a fountain. It's the fountain of life. Okay? So, the X acts, but now it turns out what I'm doing is I'm doing an X coordinate system and it's going to be all your family number groups of one and it's going to be all your family number groups of uh, four on the Y. I better circle my number because it's becoming messy. And my, this one right here is going to be my family number groups of seven. See the same? Sloppy seven. Four is part of the one group. Uh -huh. Nah, 
because they occupy different points. It is this the, this so the same, they're the same before. family number group, right. but we're not talking about family number groups right. right now. I'm showing you how the spatial orientation, how this point is so significant from this. These are all the planes of architecture. So, so, one, one, so one and eight, you're going to say are equivalent now in this system? Or what? Oh, we're getting there. Okay. It's pretty tricky. We're, we're, I might say that the most brilliant seismic engineer and architect in Mexico looked at this and he just knew what it was immediately. I wish I was as smart as him. It took me years. He said it was all the planes of spatial orientation. Okay, and you're doing it fast because you're, you've already jumped to the eight. Where is the one and eight? Here, I superimpose a double coordinate system. This is your eight. This is now your five. Remember four and fives are opposites? And this is actually, it's not going, it's going to reverse. This is your two, okay? And everything about them is opposite and reverses. This one, okay, you're about to see how it works. Yeah, it's right. What about eight? Did you? There's your eight and one. One, seven, and whatever. Here's your four and five. I know it's getting a little difficult, everybody. It'll be easier in a minute. Oh, okay, they're complements. Okay, the complements are opposite. And I put two coordinate systems together to make a stereograph. See how we have red and blue here? So I'm about, now remember, if you have stereo, you've got dimension and feel and displacement and surround sound and, okay? Yeah. Yes? Charlie, you ready? Yeah. Well, we're going to yeah. tap it anyway. Eight and one is going to be your x-axis, four and five is your y-axis, and seven and two is your z-axis. You reverse the color. Um, I'm not doing family number groups. I'm doing. I didn't reverse yeah, anything. Put a, uh, I'm showing one, one and eight. It's like altitude now. Yeah, but you've it's made more complicated you've now. Made it's good to try, but it's more complicated. Now. It explains why altitude so exists, though. Huh? Two is, two is still up to seven, but it's a different color now. That's right. Because you'll get it pretty quick. Okay, we're going to lose this one. If you need to well, see so it, you reverse the colors. There you go. Of course, they're not colorized. Are you oh, thinking well. of the colors of, of the graph that he's now writing as supposed to be the same colors as what he's written up there? That's what I'm thinking. Oh, see. Are you doing that on purpose or does that just happen to be the colors that you picked? You, you, you reversed all the colors, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's confusing him. You've got you got blue with one. See what you've done? And seven is blue and four Eight plus one is nine. Seven plus two is nine. Four plus five is nine. So I can see that. See how the X and Y are written in blue? That's what's confusing him. This 714. 174, you've taken what was pink and you've made that family into blue. What matters right now <laughs> is that yeah, I just okay, used so the same didn't color. Care arbitrarily. Okay, you didn't care about I, I, that. There is nothing arbitrary in the universe, but yes, you are correct. Okay. <laughs> so I follow you now. And I've never erased in a class before until now. <laughs> But here we go. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate meticulousness. So this is a one. This is a seven. Thanks. The moon is void, of course. Well, actually, here I did it wrong again. One, seven, four. Because it should be all red. Make them happy. One, seven, four, and that should be. Oh. And I'll put 285 in the blue so it matches the chart. And I hope, and I will probably never let this happen again. It's a mistake. Okay, eight, what is it, two, and five. Thank you. So he's right. You got it? This stuff's a poison. You've got to be careful. And those axes correspond to the different vertical levels on the... Not vertical levels. The well, horizontally lining up, the disketting, is because there's an energy. We'll come back to that. I'm saying that this is showing X, Y, Z. This is totally different. Now. Right. But you've taken that from the fact that they're complements of each other. And the that they're on, different. On the, on the corresponding corners mirrored, though. Yes. Okay. We're comfortable with that? Okay. So, so, Judy, I need your help, please, to remove this one. And this one will not be too easy to take down. As we put it on a little bit stronger. What I'm about to show you, I'll tell you real quick, 
it was we're going to show you this coordinate system, stereographic, everything overlapping. We're going to show you the skin of the toroid. We're going to show you how this all works now. And it's, it's not going to be too easy. was just to prepare you for this. Okay. Oops. But I had promised you to go into vortexes, which are more fun. Uh. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Our hero. <laughs> the white knight, the vortex. All right. So, are you missing one person? Oh, yeah. Okay, so here we go. We have the vortex. Are you ready? Okay. A vortex is compressing and it's decompressing. Okay, this is it going in at the top, coming out at the bottom. Remember the goal, the emanations. This is what everyone else lost and forget. Every physicist, every scientist, every mathematician didn't remember that right there. Okay, there's something driving this thing, and it's coming out of the center. It's a higher dimensional energy. The universe can be quantified in whole numbers. The number nine is the spindle around which everything revolves diagonally in logarithmic spirals. So there's the number nine shooting out in multiples of seven. A tornado is more powerful than a nuclear bomb. What devastated Kauai but a tornado, okay, which is a vortex? Now the reason I did this is, is that a tornado is based on the word toroid, okay, and our body is called a torso, and that's what we're modeling as a toroid. This is called a toroid coil, okay, and this is called toroidal pinch, where it gets very small in the center, center is a toroid. Now the universe, they say, well, they say a black hole disappears into nothing, but a black hole turns into a white hole. It decompresses out. Okay? Here's the Earth's magnetosphere in a toroid. Okay? These are all based on a vortex. Okay? Now, this is called a funnel. Are you having fun? And there's the dandelion puff, puff principle. How the universe reprocesses itself, because I'm saying it's an ecological system. It comes out the nozzle, the jet, which is right through here. Nature's hourglass. And decompresses, okay, and these are toroidal field coils, and decompresses and purifies it, and it comes out again, all over again, to continue the process. Okay. Uh, time ratches is four. These are just other things I put. Okay, so let's look at a toroid. Um, I'm going to ask you to be our new assistant. Yes. Would you please spin that and make that into a vortex? Do you have to stand up here? Right. Spin it? No. You know how to do it? No, he'll do it. No. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay, get it going faster, 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 faster. Okay. Okay, and stop. You just start, move your hand, hold it only in the center. There you go. There is your tornado, there is your vortex. It's compressing, going through the singularity where the energy shoots out from, and going out the white hole, and it'll come back and go again in a closed loop cycle that's ecological. And that's how the coil is made. But it's not made like this. It's made almost straight lines around the invisible nine that it's spinning around the vortex. Yeah, I'll show you how to do it real fast. You should do this my water before you drink it. Yeah, no, a lot of people sell machines that do that. So there's... They do that. In fact, they make a machine that costs forty thousand dollars. They say it puts back the life energy into the water. You just gotta shake it up. Hmm? You just gotta shake it up though. Mm -hmm. My friend Ray spins every morning. He does those fountain of youth exercises and the first one is spinning more than twenty one times. Yeah, a lot of mystics like dervishes that go into um, 
what would be the state, mystical states? Uh, uh, by the spinning and stuff like that, they go to, into ecstatic states. Yeah. They go into ex ecstatic states, but they're not stuck. Um, it's just to align the chakras, apparently. Each exercise aligns um, one chakra. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. 